So I have a nice intimate little vlog for you today. This is Mind Games TV number 11, Solo Q Training. So I want to talk a little bit about, uh, from the sports psychology perspective, like how I train my athletes to treat solo Q and how I try to train coaches who are training athletes to treat solo Q uh, and, a, and a little bit of like how it works in terms of, of looking at it from the sport perspective, bringing that over into eSport and what we know about the brain and, and training. Uh, and this is all piggybacking off of the recent discussion that's been happening about uh, people looking at the everybody's ranking as they're kind of climbing in Korea and wondering, you know, how much does solo Q matter in terms of performance uh, for the elite, for the elite level? So for people who are you know doing this professionally in League of Legends, but this applies also to Counter Strike, to DOTA, and to soccer just as equally well. So. From the sports psychology perspective, ranking in a global ladder does and doesn't matter. Obviously, it matters because it allows you to train against the best, because it allows you to get up there, and so then your opponents are better, which means that then you get better opportunities for learning, because it's not success that trains the brain, it's failure that trains the brain, when you have to adapt and learn something new and change your pattern of behavior to make it more optimized, more mastered. Okay, now a little bit why it doesn't matter, because the behaviors that you do for climb, for climbing a ladder are not optimal for training. Um, just an example, like you might want to just spam cannon over and over again and play only top lane if you were trying to, for example, climb a ladder, but that doesn't mean it's optimal for training. Now, by default, solo queue and the kind of like solo training embeds bad behaviors. There's nothing that can be done about that. The behaviors that you pick up when you're training are are always going to be suboptimal. And every time that you do any sort of repetitive action, like let's say you go out and you try to practice kicking your soccer shot on goal, you're going to practice it thousands of times incorrectly as you're slowly incrementing your way towards a masterful kick. And just like in solo queue, when you're... Uh, like a lower level player in one of these esports, you're going to be practicing your skills thousands of times incorrectly as you like slowly increment them towards the mastery level as you master your craft. And so the best option to focus on when you're doing these kind of ladder based trainings where you're just kind of out there in a scrimmage environment trying to train your mechanics or your, your reflexes, the, the best thing you can do is to either A, mitigate the worst of the embedding of these bad behaviors, and I'll talk about that in a sec, or B, not care about it and use that time in a highly focused way, and then use the team training later to kind of breed out the bad training and the bad decisions that you that you like bred into your brain by, by doing this. So let me talk about A, mitigating the worst. So what I tell the players to do to mitigate the bad behaviors they they train in is to question everything and to focus not on things that actually like seem to matter like ranking and climbing but to focus completely on learning so you should be a little bit disturbed if you are like winning every single matchup in a solo queue environment um, are you pushing yourself hard enough are you uh, pushing against the boundaries of your performance level are you pushing yourself to the point where you would fail so that you would know like how it is that you, what you're doing is suboptimal so that you can take it to the next level. So if you find yourself like winning lots of lanes and losing lots of games, then that's a, a clear warning sign that you're just kind of repeating behaviors that are not that are not optimal for winning games. Um, and so what I recommend my players to do are things like make sure you're always fighting opponents, uh, make sure that you are always asking every time you do something like why make sure that you are practicing combos excessively in in specific order make sure that you treat anything that you've mastered as an opportunity to replace it with something else so if you've mastered walking from fountain to lane in DOTA or in League of Legends or if you've mastered you know running to a certain bomb route then what could you be doing while you were making that run that would actually be training because essentially you're just wasting time now that you're doing that. Okay, and then B, not caring about, okay, 
I actually should explain a little bit about why this is on A. So essentially what's happening in the brain is whenever you learn a new motor movement, you program all of your neurons along along that motor that motor pathway uh, you know, in your brain. It's like a certain structure. You grow the neurons, you've learned the movement, and then you repeat it over and over and over again, and it reinforces that specific uh, movement in that in that exact way. When you want to then replace it with a better one, like a mastered one, you have to you have to override that original channel. Which and the more that you embed it and train it, the harder it is to override. But humans, through focus, can actually override those channels rather quickly. And so, if you focus always on the thing you're learning and on challenging the status quo of your play, then you can um, very quickly like change your your motor reflexes to be more and more optimal. And that's what is actually called deliberate training, which I've talked about in previous previous uh, episodes. So you can go check those out. Okay, B, not caring about it and using highly focused team training to breed out bad decisions. So one of the, the one of the best ways to treat this is to simply take the maximum benefit from solo some solo training which is uh, mechanical training in in team fight so like awareness of where your champion is awareness of where your character is awareness of how much ammo you have in your gun um, awareness of where other players are and refining like your combinations and your anticipation and your prediction to the highest level possible always trying to be predictive of everything that's going to happen and correcting your gut instinct when it's incorrect so you should be trusting your gut as much as possible and then um, mercilessly flogging yourself when your gut is wrong, asking yourself, why was my gut instinct incorrect? Because it's the gut instinct that you're actually training. That gut instinct is actually your uh, mastery of your craft. It's like how well you know the game. So like a pro gut instinct will be like the junglers here, or he's peeking from behind that crate. Okay, and then an amateur will not have that instinct and that instinct is something you train through exposure and then all of a sudden you kind of know it you're not really sure why is because you're assimilating a ton of different visual cues knowledge cues anticipation cues sound cues to make that assumption and so you should test that assumption all the time so take the best that you can get from solo training and then uh, just deal with the fact that it's going to embed bad behaviors and try to breed those out in team training. So then in team training, when you're with your team, you want to focus really hard on your role. You want to focus really hard on on uh, serving your teammates as much as possible in terms of like, um, well, I want to say unselfish play, but it's really a mixture of selfish play in that you're developing yourself and improving your chance to win and also unselfishly trusting your teammates even though you know that they may lose you a game, trusting them to the extent that they can perform on that level and that you can like all, you are like counting on them over and over again. And then when they fail, um, it doesn't affect your pattern of behavior because you're still going to trust them in that, in that kind of moment. So it's kind of like a blind trust that you're building up, which you don't necessarily have in, in the, the solo training environment. Okay. So that's what I wanted to talk about today in terms of solo queue training and, and how it's beneficial for people. And I hope this sheds some light on what what to look for when you're looking at your, your pro players in the ladder and you see what it is that they're doing and what rank they are and and kind of see that like sometimes people will be training something new really excessively and losing lots of games and losing rank. And what they're doing is going through this messy process where your fitness will actually drop below average level as you're doing this kind of like intensive training of something new, because remember you're rewriting your motor reflexes, you're making them suboptimal again because you're trying to change them. And then as you improve it back up to your normal level, you'll, you'll go beyond the previous level of fitness you were able to achieve in that movement and go to the next level of skill or, or mastery. Okay. That's what I want to talk about today. You can see this awesome check them out they're so cool uh it's like a it's basically like under armor but like turned into a dress shirt so super breathable really comfortable to wear doesn't really ever smell that much you don't need to iron it and it always looks good i love them and also my fedora up there which i don't actually have that actually i do though it's awesome i won it at a christmas party my wife's one of my wife's family's christmas parties it's like a white elephant and i got it and nobody could steal it from me 
And that's my camping cooler right there.